Well, good morning, boys and girls. Working on the power drawbar today, but uh, I had a couple of interesting little um, revelations, I guess, and I thought I'd share them with you while I've still got it set up here. What I've been doing is just taking the... Oh, I've got a couple of pieces of heavier stock that I showed in the in the uh, last video on that we just released on um, starting the power drawbar, and I'll put a link up here someplace, one of these corners that goes in. And um, that stock was pretty scabby, so it was it was pretty ugly. It had been used, you know, it had been machined down into and stuff like that. Well, I went ahead and I flattened out both of those, squared up the corners, so I've got two square pieces. This is the bigger of the two sitting here in the mill, and this is the smaller that I'm going to use for the base of the drawbar itself. This plate's going to sit on top of the mill and uh, attach everything there. But what I wanted to share with you on this is a couple of things have appeared on this mill that um, I'm going to have to address at some point in time, and it's not going to be too long before we address them. But I got a comment early on in one of the early videos, just we were setting this up, that um, I should have torn the table off and deburred it and checked everything out. And I don't necessarily agree with that because until you've got the machine and run it a little bit, you don't know where you started, let alone where you need to go with it. So, now, this mill has been here for almost a month now, I guess. Not not quite. Three weeks, four weeks, something like that. Not quite a full month. And um, I've, I've been running it, as you've seen, and making changes to it, and hopefully upgrades and things like that. But now it's starting to show some of the things that I'm going to have to address. And... You know, I could have torn the table off, deburred everything, and started looking at it right then. And, and I ran an indicator across it, and we've shown that before. Um, I haven't traversed the table back to forth to find out how in tram the mill head was going this way. And that's one of the things that's showing itself right now. Is um, I fly cut these, both of these, with a uh, Tormach Superfly. It's the one that's still here in the mill. And the insert's starting to get a little dull on this. You know, I need to change the insert. And I actually intended to change it before I gave this cut, see if it'll give me a little more information. But I got around this morning and just ran the fly cutter across here to move along. Um, and I'll change that probably the next time I use it for aluminum and we'll, we'll make adjustments. Maybe it'll tell me a little bit more. So the finish is not as nice as I've gotten with this cutter before, even on the G1007. Just because, like I say, I think it's getting dull. But the mill itself is telling me a couple of things. One of them is I've got ridges here. And we've got, well, uh, the cut on this ends up being um, not quite three inches. Probably two and three quarters of an inch is how this is set up for, for our cut. I haven't actually measured it, but that's about what we've got when I initially set it up for the CNC. Why I think I had it measured up. But it looks to be just about two and three quarters. We're a little under three. So... And the way I cut these, and I cut them both the same, was we made a cut down here, we traversed back the other way, and then we did a final small cleanup. And on this one we did it in two passes, so it was just down and back. And I did it the same way. One of the other things that I should have done on this one before I started cutting is I should have just made one cut down the center to see what kind of a cut it gave me. But I've got a ridge here, and I've got a ridge here. And it's a, enough of a ridge that I can feel it. So what that's telling me is that the mill's out of tram. We're leaning this way a little bit as opposed to being vertical here. So, and I don't know exactly why yet. I don't know if the mill is literally out of tram. I don't know if the four bolts that hold the column onto the base are not as tight as they could be. We may be getting a little bit of movement there, and, and the weight of the, the mill head may be pulling it a little bit. When I initially was playing with the mill when we first brought it in, why those bolts, I just stuck the wrench in because I was trying to find out what size wrenches we had. Uh, the great big wrench that they gave with this actually fits that, I believe. And um, they weren't exceptionally tight. You know, they were snug, but they just a little bit of... And, and I left them. I didn't change anything. So, other than to initially find out that they were out a little bit. Or not as tight as maybe they should have been. So, it may be just adjusting the tension on those bolts may bring that back into tram and, and do it. It's, it's enough to where I can feel it. You know, it's for the class of work that I'm doing right here, right now. It doesn't make any difference. So... I'm going to continue with this project, and things will continue to present themselves to me that we need to address. The other thing is, I've noticed with the table traverse all the way to the right, I've got a little more, it's not binding, but a little more tension on this end of the table. Now, 
several things could be causing that. It could be the extra weight of the table being on this end, although it's not something that I noticed at the very beginning when we first started running this mill. So I've been making sure we're well lubed and everything, um, although I'm going to pull the scales on the back and check, find out where our lube point is on there, because I think I may have covered it up with the, with the scale cover on the back for the digital readout. So I'm going to pull that probably later today and see what I find there. Um, it may be an issue with lubrication there. It may be an a issue with lubrication on this end where we talked about the uh, lead screw bearing having no access to that gets oiler. So that may be part of the issue too. Um, I'm not going to worry a tremendous amount about either of those issues here probably within the next week or so. We're going to go ahead and pull this power feed. I'm going to bore the hole for that and we'll check out that lead screw bearing make sure it's lubed up. And with the power feed off then we'll start checking table movement again and see. Um, Maybe that we've deburred a little bit just by running it, and it's deburred this end of the table, and this end's still a little bit tight. I've been trying to run it fairly evenly, so we've got even all the way along. Um, in my opinion, every time you stone something, deburr something, file on something, machine anything, surface grind it, you're inducing wear is what you're doing. Now, it's, that sounds kind of excessive when we start talking about surface grinding surfaces and things like that. But all of those things are removing material, so we're wearing away the surface that was originally there. So now it's starting to tell me a little bit about what it's doing, and um, you know we'll start addressing those issues. And I still I'm not disappointed. I think it's going to be a going to be a fine machine once it's all set up and done. But as I said originally, I consider every machine a project, whether it's a new machine, whether it's a used machine. Um, so this is just part of the process of getting it set up. But I wouldn't have really known what was going on had I initially torn the part and started working on it. Now when I do get around to delving into this a little bit deeper, why we're going to see some wear patterns on it, and it'll give me an idea of what's going on. Um, I've heard that the tapered gibs on these are not, they're just machined and maybe not very well machined. So, uh, and I have not pulled a gib out of this to, to look at it at all. It may very well be that we have to scrape those in and uh, get them to bear a little bit more or anything. Like I say, once we get to taking it on apart again and looking a little bit closer, we'll know a little bit more. So, anyway, just thought I'd share. Hopefully that um, gives you a little bit of something to look at. And, uh, you know, if you've got a problem with the machine, if you're buying a new machine, whatever the case may be, if you haven't hit that subscribe button and this interests you, I'd appreciate it if you did. And bell notification will let you know when I put out a new video. And as always, comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And thanks for taking the time to watch, guys. I'm going to go on to building the power drawbar.